will be reading and analyzing the kernel. What you have heard is true. I was in his house. His wife carried a tray of coffee and sugar. His daughter filed her nails. His son went out for the night. There were daily papers, pet dogs, a pistol on the cushion beside him. The moon swung bare on its black cord over the house. On the television was a cop show. It was in English. Broken bottles were embedded in the walls around the house to scoop the kneecaps from a man's legs or cut his hands to lace. On the windows, there were gratings like those in liquor stores. We had dinner, rack of lamb, good wine. A gold bell was on the table calling the maid. The maid brought green mangoes, salt, a type of bread. I was asked how I enjoyed the country. There was a brief commercial in Spanish. His wife took everything away. There was some talk then of how difficult it had become to govern. The parrot said hello on the terrace. The colonel told it to shut up and pushed himself from the table. My friend said to me with his eyes, say nothing. The colonel returned with a sack used to bring groceries home. He spilled many human ears on the table. They were like dried peach halves. There's no other way to say this. He took one of them in his hands, shook it in our faces, dropped it into a water glass. It came alive there. I'm tired of fooling around, he said. As for the rights of anyone, tell your people they can go themselves. He swept the ears to the floor with his arm and held the last of his wine in the air. Something for your poetry, no, he said. Some of the ears on the floor caught the scrap of his voice. Some of the ears on the floor were pressed to the ground. Okay, so this poem was really dark. And I'm going to start with a meaning, like the summary of it. So basically, I think it's the author talking, but basically she's like a witness and she starts off with her visit at the colonel's house. And you can already kind of tell that there's something wrong because it mentions like the broken bottles there to cut the kneecaps of people and stuff like that. So you already know there's something wrong with that. And there's also like gratings at liquor stores. They move on and they're having their meal. It's like a really, it's like a feast. So there's lamb, there's meat and there's wine and it's really like a luxury. And then it shifts right after they talk about like governing and how hard it was because that's when she started talking about the colonel's actions because beforehand like she never mentioned the colonel she just said he and then she mentioned the colonel did all this where he like said shut up and then like he did all these violent things took out the bag of ears which is kind of horrifying and stuff like that and yeah so that's kind of the main summary of the poem and the antecedent scenario i'm guessing is well, obviously there's like a violation of human rights, so the scenario or the situation of this is like talking about how cruel the colonel is beforehand and then now it's like verifying it and how there's like rumors of is it true that the colonel does this and that? So that's kind of the um, background of this. And the division of parts, this whole thing is in one paragraph, so there's not really like any break or new paragraph, but you can see like a significant change right after um, the parrot saying hello, it then says the colonel told it to shut up and then it goes on with a line of every action that the colonel did. Um, the other parts fall around it is, I think it's like a slow rise because in the beginning it's it's like peaceful and tranquil because there's like a meal going on, but you know there's something kind of wrong because you saw that um, the broken bottles were there. So, so it's like really slowly going up and then all of a sudden the colonel like said shut up and did violent things like that. So it kind of goes up from there. So that's the skeleton too. The language I'd like to also point out, everything is written in like a simple sentence structure. There's not really any complex sentences or like additional clauses. It's like super straight up and monotone in a way. And each sentence is like, this person did that, this person did that. So the um, agent is just describing what she saw and what she witnessed. Also, the only change that you see in tense is when the colonel said shut up. So everything was in simple sentences beforehand. And then all of a sudden it said, the colonel told it to shut up and pushed himself from the table. So you see that change, it's like really drastic. Even though it's in the middle of a paragraph, in the even though it's in the middle of the paragraph and there's no sudden like enter, like <laughs> new paragraph made from that. Okay. So the tone, it's all really monotone and kind of boring. I'd say they kind of leave the emotions out of it. It's really like this is what I saw. This is, it's kind of objective and really direct and like a matter of a fact tone, kind of just stating what happened and the agent never really offered any of their own like insight or emotional like reactions to all of this. And there's a lot of short and concise sentences that are like less than eight words, eight, seven words. Like I was in his house, um, it was in English, it was in Spanish and stuff like that. Roads not taken. She could have just spent a lot of time just ranting about how horrible the colonel is and how much he violates like human rights and all this and her own emotional reactions and how she was so appalled and disgusted by what was happening but she didn't really offer any of her input or insight she just stated what happened so i guess that's a way for the reader or the audience or what we have heard to 
kind of use the experience that she had and draw our own conclusions and find our own like thoughts and emotional reactions from this. Everything is also in past tense. There's no tense change. So it's also like um, contributing to that like monotoneness, like this is what happened. It was kind of as if she was like numb from all that happened. So she didn't really put any emotions cause I guess maybe it like scarred her that much. I don't know. Also the genre is kind of like a short story because it's not really like poetry, it's more just prose. There's no stanzas, one whole thing is a paragraph. I think it's kind of like a diary entry because at the end it said May 1978 when it happened. So maybe she was writing this as an experience that happened in her like diary or journal. And it's also like a narration, like this is how I saw things that happened. She describes things like so clearly and kind of without any emotion. So I think it's more reliable to look at. It's kind of like a overall arching theme of like human rights because of the cruelty of the colonel. Also for imagination, she talks as if she's um, talking to you directly. In the beginning, it says what you have heard is true. So it's kind of like she's recounting the story. And because it's in the past, she's kind of going through it as fast as possible. So you can know the facts as like fast as possible to transfer that knowledge. And there are no quotes um, used by the colonel. So it's kind of like, oh, so this is what she said. It's kind of like a dialogue, like as if someone's talking to you about the story. So when you read it, it's not as fluid as if someone spoke it to you. She's always describing what she saw and what happened. And she also compares ears to peach house, which is also really disgusting and like horrible to think about. It makes you kind of cringe a little. At the end, she emphasized the ears by saying like some of the ears were pressed to the ground and some of the ears heard this voice. So it's kind of like scary thinking about that because they all belong to living people at one point. And I think that's what she wants to leave you with in terms of this whole incident with the ears.